It has been said in the past that great products do come in small packages like the Venino M8 Pico Projector. So here without further ado, let's jump into the unboxing and the review of this product. The Venino M8 is an Android based Pico projector that I picked up directly from Amazon and at that time it was available through the Prime server so I only got it in two days. Right now it's out of stock so you can only get it directly from China through the Amazon um, website of course. But it would take about 10 to 12 days to arrive to your house versus the two days that I got it. So there is a little bit of a difference. You can either wait for it to become available on Prime again or just order it right now and it will be 100% safe. Now this device here is carrying Android, as I said before, is the 4.4 KitKat. It has a Rockship processor, it is quad core, is the RK3188. It has one and a half gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Keep in mind that this is not a gaming projector. It's actually intended for streaming and not gaming. Uh, just keep that in mind. It comes with 80 lumens and also has a built-in battery of 5,000 milliamps. Now you can also use it as a power bank and if you use it constantly it will last you about three hours so I think it's kind of cool. And it does support you know a lot of uh, streaming um, applications like Netflix, Kodi, YouTube and so on and so forth. So getting a look at the box here we can see that we don't have any brands whatsoever even though it is known as Benino. On the back side here of the box we find some of the specs of this product and then getting a look inside we will find that the product it's actually quite secure in here. It does come with a lot of foam. And here we have the Pico projector. I believe the only color that it comes available is in white, which is a little bit of a bummer because if you touch this with your hands dirty, you will clearly see all the stains very quickly. So here on the top, you have some of the capacitive buttons. We do have some um, arrows so that we can navigate throughout the system. We have a selector, we have a back key, a menu key, and also a power on switch. Now getting a look here at the frame, it looks like an iPhone 5S, but just very bulky. On the side here we have a dedicated switch so that you can convert from Android to the TF card in case you want to uh, load up your media right here on this little slot. We do have a uh, focus wheel. Now we don't have a keystone wheel, that's because it does have auto keystone, it'll do it for you. So let's say you're projecting and you tilt the device. It does have a gyro built in that it will notice that you have tilted the device and it'll fix any distortions on the projections. We're gonna be seeing that later on in the video. Now getting a look here on the side of the device, we find all the ports, we got the HDMI port, we have a little vent here for the fan. We have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the charging port and then two USB ports. On the back side, this is going to be um, a little light, even though it does look like a speaker. This is not a speaker and it's also not intended for ventilation purposes. It's just a regular light so that it indicates when your battery is low and when the battery is okay. Flipping the projector to the front side, we find the lens and this is a 80 lumen lens as I mentioned before and also comes with a LED light that is able to last about 30,000 hours, which is quite cool. Now, once you guys see the projection later, you will notice how bright this thing can be and it can project as small as 10 inches and as big as 120 inches on very low light conditions. So that means that you can have a light turned on. Now, to get the perfect picture, I would just recommend to go about 80 inches. On the bottom side here, we find a female tripod connector. We also have the two speakers. Uh, we also got here some information about the product such as the serial number and also the model which is the M8 as I said before. Just search it on Google and you will find many brands for this product. So here we have it for the projector. Let's go ahead and set this aside so we can talk about what comes inside. So other than the foam divider we have here some manuals which basically teaches you how to set it up, how to turn it on and so on and so forth and also some of the settings that you can do to it. You have here the charger. Okay, and you can also use it even if it's dead. You don't need to wait until the battery charges, so that's kind of cool. And these are the uh, specs of the charger. I believe that this is going to be the uh, HDMI cable. There we go. It has been untouched by me so far. And then finally, we have another divider where it's going to carry the standard remote control. Now in this case, I will be using my Bluetooth keyboard because it is a lot easier and if you guys notice, it doesn't have a mouse cursor on here so you can just press a button and then move it around. It doesn't have that ability just like we saw on the uh, Doogie P1 projector. I guess that was a little bit of a, a difference there between both but now according to everything else that this projector comes with, I think it's a lot better than the Doogie P1 projector. So now let's go ahead and take this thing out of this plastic wrapper and then we're going to find 
on the top here the power key now this is actually a turn off key you can't power on the projector directly from here you have a silence uh, key we also got here some arrows so that we can navigate throughout the system and a selector we have a menu key the volume up and down a back key and also a home key which is required by android so it is a very simplistic remote control here and it does require two AAA batteries just so that you guys can be ready they're not included so now as you guys can tell inside of the box we have nothing else so let's go ahead and power on this baby and see what the operating system is all about here we go all right so here we are graded with the operating system and also the quality of the projection itself and we can notice how great it is and this is only at 30 inches right now and we can go up to 120 inches but like I said on the beginning of the video, if you want to keep a very nice resolution and also colors, I would definitely recommend no more than 80 inches as you will get the best results ever. I do have a light turned on here in my room so I can see the keyboard that I'm using. I'm using the Bluetooth, uh, this is called the Logitech Bluetooth uh, keyboard. And it comes ready with the mouse pad on it so it's really convenient to use and I would definitely not recommend that little remote that came with it. So here getting a look at some of the applications that we have in stock already it came with Kodi, it has Facebook, I wouldn't trust this, I would just recommend that you guys uninstall it directly from the Play Store and then download it again. Uh, we have Twitter, we have Miracast and Miracast is working perfectly well. I connected to my Samsung Galaxy S7 and it was working fine. The transmission is very fast and smooth as well and then here we have YouTube. Let's go ahead and open it so that way you guys can see the quality of YouTube and I'm also going to be providing a little sample video. Now I know that on the camera here there is a little bit of um, a rainbow effect and that's been caused by the camera itself. So let's go ahead and here uh, play some of my old videos which is the canned uh, cruiser bike that you guys saw me doing about four months ago. So let's go ahead and click on it to check out that video and here we go. This is the quality of it. So as you guys can tell so far the uh, speaker on it is not the strongest point as a matter of fact I would recommend that you guys get a Bluetooth speaker and just uh, pair with it because you're going to be extremely disappointed. Now some of the uh, strong points of this projector is the fact that the battery will last you the actual three hours that they are promising and you can use it as a power bank so that means that you can turn off this unit and connect your uh, smartphone directly on the uh, USB port and it'll start charging your phone at least one time. Now that's only in case of emergency don't rely on this thing to use it as a power bank all the time as you may actually break the device so this is only in case you're running out of battery or you really want to see that movie and finish it up and you're using your device as a mobile hotspot or something of that nature then I would recommend using it uh, you know for charging purposes just for a little bit um, anyways I also downloaded here the Antutu benchmark test which I didn't open by accident here it is uh, it gave it a score of about 18,000 so nothing really impressive and once again, I want to apologize for that rainbow effect. It's all being caused by the camera. But anyways, we can see it right there is 18,240. So it is not the best score out there. As a matter of fact, it's quite poor, but it has to do to the fact that, you know, this is mainly a streaming projector and not a gaming projector. So for that reason, I won't be providing any samples for gaming because to be honest with you guys, it will suck a bit. But then, as I said before, this thing will do great for uh, streaming music. And here we have Cody. We also have Netflix. I'm just going to open Netflix so that you can see that it is working. Now, um, unfortunately, I can't play anything on here as it is prohibited by YouTube. And I've been hit sometimes before, so I can't do anything about that. And also, I haven't seen any uh, projector out there, especially the Pico sizes, that will provide a 10-inch um, projection. I mean, with focus and everything, I think that's quite insane. So let's go ahead and exit out of this application once again and let's see what else we got on here. Uh, we do have the browser. I want to test here the Wi-Fi speed so that you guys can see how great it is. Right now the Wi-Fi that I have uh, is quite strong as well and it does remain this way pretty much the entire time. So let's go ahead and double click on here once again. There we go. Let's search something here like um, let's go into Amazon itself. So Amazon.com there we go i think i typed in the wrong thing okay um let's do just once there we go it's currently loading and now let's go ahead and search here for the benino pico 
projector. And let's see if it comes up. There's only one. There we go. And I think it just came out. So let's go ahead and uh, close here the keyboard. And here it is. It's $299. Let's go here to the Amazon app this time. Let's go a little bit lower. And the link has been provided below for your own information. And these are all the things that come inside as promised. Except that I didn't get the extendable tripod leg. Wow, that's something I didn't receive inside of the packaging, but I guess that you will receive it. This is a demo unit that I received directly from this company. And let me tell you that it is absolutely outstanding. So far, I'm loving this little projector. It's because of the fact that you can take it pretty much anywhere that you want to and you can do so much with it. You know, again, it has Android on it. So you can stream anything you want. You can use Kodi, you can use Netflix, pretty much anywhere that you want to. And also, uh, you can use pretty much anything as a projector screen as well. So let's go ahead and exit completely and go back here to the operating system. Sometimes you do need a little remote control to just hit the home key because with the keyboard, you have to hit escape until you go back to the home. Uh, we also got here the Play Store and we're gonna open it just for your own uh, view so that way you can see that everything comes functioning great out of this projector. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any updates as of right now, so it is still on Android 4.4. Now, heading back here to the main screen, let's go here directly into the settings that come on the upper tabs, and we can see here a more simplified settings uh, version of it. So on top, you got the ethernet. I really don't know why this is there because we don't have an ethernet port. We have the Wi-Fi connection, the display. Let's go ahead and check and see what's on the display. And here we can change the font size, the brightness, the color temperature, uh, the projection model, the auto rotation, the auto keystone. And this is the feature that I've been mentioning over and over. And also we have manual control keystone. Now, unfortunately on this projector, it doesn't have the little um, you know, manual, the ability to do it manually, unfortunately. So you only have the option of auto keystone. Otherwise your picture will remain distorted. So going back here, let's go ahead and search for sound and on sound we really can't do much. We can only change uh, some of the volumes on here which are not even available. Uh, we got advanced settings and on advanced settings here we can find all the languages supported. So let's go ahead and uh, scroll here and we do have a whole bunch of them. It's about 48 languages available so that's kind of neat. And I would guess that this is the international version so that's kind of cool. Uh, going back here. Let's go ahead and check again on settings. What else we have? We have devices information. And here we have the kernel version, the Android version once again, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and check here um, the HDMI connection. You can just uh, press this and connect any HDMI port into it. It doesn't have a uh, input key on the remote controller. So I guess that's why they included that tab. So it is very crucial uh, that if you guys update the operating system, make sure that it is designed for this device. Otherwise you may have problems later on. And also we got here a little uh, task killer. So if you uh, press it, it'll kill pretty much everything that you have in the background, making your device a little bit faster and also relieving pressure from that little one gigabyte of RAM. And now with all of this being said, I have concluded my unboxing and the review of the Veneno MA projector. And if you guys have any questions, as always, please don't forget to comment below. Don't forget to like this video if you think it was helpful. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next one.